What do I mean by tone? According to Microsoft Bing, it's a musical or vocal sound with reference to its pitch, quality, and strength. But today, I'm referring to its second definition, the general character or attitude of a place, piece of writing, or situation. Final Fantasy XV isn't known for any particularly good reasons, with one major exception. This game's vibe is just phenomenal, for the first eight chapters at least. But what separates the first eight chapters from the rest? In Chapter 1, we are dropped straight in the middle of Noctis and Crew's light, with no real issue context-wise. Crazy how the player knows everything they need to know about this cast in just about 30 seconds. We know we will be going through some shit, whether that shit is because of hardship or idiocy. The first eight chapters are full of character interactions that are borderline cringe at times. And honestly, it just works. Noctis and his friends may whine and complain or deliver some odd lines, but the tone of the story remains believable. Noctis whining or being edgy makes sense considering both his upbringing as an heir to royalty and the fall of Lucis. Same with Gladius, who was born into the Kingsguard where he would learn to fight and sacrifice his life for Noctis if it was necessary for his safety. All of the characters remain true to what the game tells the player. The story of this game is structured in a way that supports these characters. Chapter 1 through 8 is basically one giant road trip with four close friends. At this point, the writers did a good job of retaining a singular vibe throughout the game, despite certain sadder events. The sadder events are always padded within the open world. One specific chapter may have you brought to a skyline view of the Fallen Kingdom, but the next chapter will always bring you to another part of the world, with new people to meet and things to do. Because of this, the player can feel compelled to interact with the world more than other open world games, whether you want a break from the story or if you just want to explore. If there is a town or a side dungeon, you can just park your car and explore that shit. Side content coexists with the main story, and because the main story only has you go through certain parts of the world at certain times, the side content is extremely tailored towards the player. This vibe isn't limited to story events either. Your entire experience will be filled with these four engaging with each other in the world. These interactions always lead to points of interest that fill the mostly empty map. One of the best quest lines in this game happened because Prompto is insistent on riding a chocobo, which you can accept or decline. It all feels in character. I even found myself stopping at scenic points because Prompto wanted to take a photo. Other times, I would camp at the beach and be asked to train by Gladius. Or enter a new city, only for some characters to run over to an ad and ask to try some famous food from the area. It's not all perfect, though. That's it! What's what? I've come up with a new recipe. That's it! That's, That's it. it! I've come up with a new recipe! To be honest, the repetitive dialogue can get annoying, but adds some charm to the game. Stuff like this tends to be a quirk of JRPGs. Unlike previous entries, music isn't continuously blasted in your ears. Games like Final Fantasy XII, and the retro ones, XV's approach to music is more similar to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Certain tracks dynamically play as you're walking around the landscapes. To see how this changes the feel of the game, check out the difference between Dragon Quest XI's music and Final Fantasy XV. This song will play on loop your entire fucking playthrough. And what did you do with Iggy? My lips are sealed. This song will play sparingly, making the peaceful moments of the game shine. I heard the theme in Dragon Quest XI so much throughout my 100 hour playtime, it genuinely began to hurt my enjoyment. Can you believe that it's also technically the better game? So what about the final few chapters of this game? Why are they so bad? They took the only good thing this game had going for it and threw it into the trash. They replaced a road trip around the open world with uninspired linear levels. Not to mention, the story attempts to introduce more serious emotional beats, and way more often. It doesn't really work that well. This tends to happen if the player gets no time to breathe. You can still go back to the open world, but now it's via time travel. We've entered the realm of non-canon exploration. 
The player is no longer incentivized to explore the world or do any side quests. The road trip is over. The entire game was spent letting the player interact with the world immersively. Taking that away ruins the whole point of the experience. The experience itself was mid if you recount moments individually. It was the package as a whole that made Final Fantasy XV's first eight chapters interesting. Teleporting around the map of time travel is hardly as fun as driving. Each time you drove into a new part of the world, the characters would chime in and bring you to all sorts of different places. Just by playing the game, whether it be the story or side stuff, you will eventually run into endgame content. The player is shown all types of side content they can't access yet, and some players like me may be excited by that prospect. About 10 hours of everything you don't like about a game erases any excitement you had for an irrelevant endgame. Final Fantasy XV was an unfinished mess at release, and it still is now, despite multiple updates. Even if chapters 1 through 8 are interconnected, while retaining an enjoyable tone that incites you to engage with the game's content, many aspects of chapter 1 through 8 are still quite bad. If it wasn't for the vibe this game gives when playing it, nobody would play it for more than an hour. Not for the horrible combat or empty open world. The end game has no magic to it, even despite the fact that it's the same open world. The characters have said everything interesting about the world by the time you get to this point, so why lock hours of content until now? The cutoff point was way too early into the game and makes side content feel like a waste of time. The tone that made this game so fun is partially here, but not nearly to the same effect.